Okay, so um, this is session three of um, creation and environmental ethics. Um, I'm Michelle Everson Thomas, if you um, haven't seen me already. Um, and we've looked with this is three sessions where we're looking at um, how Christians view the world, how people who might not yet be Christians also see the world um, about the damage that's been that's been done to the world, but also ways that we can do something about that. Um, so in our first session, um, we looked at what the Bible says about creation and what Christians believe about that. Um, in our second session, we looked at different ways of viewing the world. And in this session, we're going to look at um, pra practical aspects of how we can care for God's creation. So I'm just going to share my screen now. Can you all see that okay? Yeah, yeah. It's yep. Lovely. Yeah. lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to move it over a bit so we don't, I can see you and still see the screen at the same time, which is beneficial, rather than not be able to see the edge of it. Um, so when I think about um, caring for the creation um, and things we can do sort of to behave and with environmental ethics, something that I've always kind of had in my mind is what I call to myself a redeeming feature. Um, and I'll come to what I mean by that in a moment. Um, so as I said, over our previous sessions, just to recap, we looked at how God created a good world, um, which has been damaged, unfortunately, by human sin, um, but that he, he, God intends for us to care for the world, to be stewards of the creation. And that God, the creator, will also redeem the whole world in the future. Um, so we talked about this idea of a, sort of like a circle, a cyclical um, action of God, where he created the world, humans have messed it up, and he's going to put it right again. Um, and then we, all, um, we also looked about um, how human beliefs and attitudes have led to the eco-crisis. Two particular attitudes um, we looked at were this attitude of the world is ours to treat as we wish, um, and also that we can find satisfaction and fulfillment in consumerism, in buying things, in eating things, in sort of fulfilling our desires for stuff. Um, and so both of those views can be seen, you know, amongst Christians, but also amongst, amongst agnostic or atheist people can be, you know, anyone can, can be prey to those kind of attitudes. Um, so today we're going to look at some practical steps we can take to care for the creation. So we live in a world which is not as it should be. Um, so no lifestyle is going to care for our world completely. Um, so therefore, I suggest that we look for redeeming features in the products we buy and the activities we partake in, um, e.g. at the very least, something which makes the damage done less severe. So I suppose if... If you were in a position where you could um, own a farm and grow grow produce on the farm, care for your own animals, then it might be possible um, to truly care for the creation. Even then, though, we, you might be looking at providing energy um, or providing transport for yourself, which would, might also come with some problems. So when I say redeeming features, that might sound negative, as if I don't think that we can care for the world without that it's sort of destined to go wrong. What I mean is realistically, sometimes there's only so much we can do in certain situations, or we might be in a process where we start changing one thing at a time. Um, so, but we can talk more about that um, later on. Um, so the main, the main aspect we're gonna look at today is what should we eat? But we're gonna look at some other aspects of um, caring for the environment as well. But food is a really big issue on this. Um, so two particular um, things that I want to talk about are organic food and a vegan diet. So organic food, um, and this is the source of this is the Britannica online encyclopedia. Organic food means it is produced without the use of man-made chemicals 
and does not contain genetically modified organisms. It can be bought from local farmers or from supermarkets by looking out for the organic standard certification on the label. Um, so if you can't go to a farmer that you actually know personally, um, then there's certification, there's certification on the label that you can look at when you're in the supermarket. Um, it does, sorry, that should say, it does not always address animal welfare, but it does benefit the environment, particularly the soil. Um, organic products are usually more expensive, but considered to be healthier. Sometimes poorer countries export all their organic products to wealthier countries and the organic certification can be too expensive for some smaller farmers. Um, organic farmers may still use fossil fuels. Um, so another thing that I'd like to talk about is a vegan diet. So veganism, as you probably noticed, is becoming more popular in, in this part of the world in any case. And there's, there's been a long history of it along as a branch off of vegetarianism in general. So a vegan diet avoids all foods and ingredients from an animal source. People following this diet also tend not to wear clothes made from animal products either. It is usually a reaction against the factory farming system um, where maximum profit is obtained at the expense of animals being treated respectfully and with due care. A vegan diet can provide all the nutrients ne necessary to humans. Livestock farming is a major source of methane emissions and meat production requires more water and land than vegetable production. So following a vegan lifestyle can counter climate change. Um, so that was also based on information from Botanica. Um, obviously, I know a lot about this being a um, following a vegan diet myself as well. Um, so some other aspects of of foods um, to think about. It's quite overwhelming when you think of all the different um, aspects there are. Um, so where food has been seen to be in short supply, where there's been too much taken from the environment, um, there has now been a push against sustainability. So with fish, um, you, can, you can buy particularly tuna um, that has got this label on it, um, so um, my children um, eat tuna and I will look out for this label when I buy tuna for them. Um, and, but overall, this is um, um, a chart which shows you um, which fish is more in trouble, which fish are more in trouble and which fish are not, not taken, um, you know, there's not such a short supply of. So in the green, you've got the ones that there are more of um, and then in between, you've got the orange and obviously the reds where um, there's been or overfishing of those particular fish. Um, in the same way, you've got um, an issue with palm oil and soya um, where too much has been taken from the rainforest, which has caused a problem for rainforest. And then again, you can you can either avoid those products or look out for sustainable versions of them. Um, so here are some, some logos for um, certified responsible soya and non-genetically -gen modified soya. Um, then for those people who do eat meats, then again with my children, you can, um, I look out for this RSPCA assured um, sign which shows that the RSPCA have been in and checked animal welfare standards. Um, there's not a huge range of meat available with this sign, but there is some that um, you can get ham, for example, you know, in our, in our local Sainsbury's that will have that on it. Um, it tends to be more expensive, although the prices have come down a little bit more recently. Um, then you've also got another thing that's been happening recently, um, where there's been um, a move to put unusual shapes, fruits and vegetables. Mm. Um, so these are appearing now more in the supermarkets, I'm pleased to say, whereas if the um, fruit or vegetable was any kind of unusual shape, um, it, it seems it was previously sort of rejected and not taken to the supermarket. Some of the supermarkets are starting to have that now, which is good news. Um, but there's also um, companies that also like odd box that also just go and collect up the ones that aren't being sold to the supermarkets. 
So that's another thing to um, be aware of. Um, also something that I hadn't really thought about until I was preparing for this session so much about eating seasonably. So whereas, um, so you can look up on this eating seasonably website, it's very handy. There's a chart which shows you which fruit and vegetables are in season in which months of the year, which I didn't know about. So that might be something to have a look at as well. Um, then other issues that aren't to do with food as part of caring for the environment. Um, so one aspect is to do with transport. Um, so um, it was noticed um, that um, during, you know, the first um, wave of the, the first lockdown for COVID that people were using their vehicles less because they were being told to stay at home and that had um, a beneficial impact on the environment. Um, but then people were starting to go back to it when the lockdown was eased. And of course, we went into another lockdown and another one. Um, so there's been this push to kind of encourage people to walk or cycle or use public transport rather than driving. I mean, I've never learned to drive, so it's not an issue for me. Um, I've always, you know, found other ways of getting to places. Um, but some people also do carpooling or car sharing, you know, where they're arranging to travel with friends or colleagues if they're going to the same place and that kind of thing. Um, there's also a website which I'm going to have a, a proper look at as well now that looks at green energy suppliers. So it's one of those comparison websites. Um, that um, you can go on and compare prices, um, but they're ones that are meant to be um, a more green energy source. Um, then obviously we, we should all know a fair amount about recycling, um, reduce, reuse, recycle. We have, um, you know, we're lucky enough um, to have collections from our homes for recycling for most things. And um, there are other places you can take things to be recycled. Um, and we can also take things to charity shops. Um, this is this picture in the middle here to represent that rather than throwing things in the bin. Obviously for clothes that are damaged in some way like ripped, they can sometimes be recycled too. Um, there are lots of sort of eco cleaning products you can get now. I mean, you can sometimes just make your, make your own in the sense of vinegar, for example, will clean glass. Um, you know, you, you can just literally get some ordinary vinegar to do that. Um, but there are lots of eco products on the market as well. Um, but they used to also be very expensive, but I think that's started to change now. Then there are some washable items. Um, so might not affect, uh, affect everyone here. I don't know if anyone, I don't think anyone here has got a baby, um, but certainly you can get um, washable nappies, which obviously everyone used to have. And then there was a move towards disposable nappies. Um, so that's, that's something. And there's also um, washable sanitary products now. Um, so, and they're, they're, they've designed these, these um, washable nappies and washable sanitary products are shaped and sewn up nicely with nice patterns on. It just means that um, people are doing the washing um, at least some of the time or rather than throwing that item in the bin that's going to end up in the ocean or in landfill. Um, yes, yeah, so that's just some other aspects to think about. Um, if anyone wants any link to these websites um, later on, then just let me know and I can email you. So just to finish, um, we talked a bit earlier about um, Tier Fund. Um, so Tier Fund have now got um, a series of videos, um, nine films made by um, Catherine Hayhoe, who is a Christian scientist. I haven't actually watched them yet, but um, I probably will do later on. Um, so you can find them on the Tier Fund website. They have some sort of discussion questions with them. Um, she's talking to people in Scotland about different aspects of environmental care from a Christian perspective. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing that for now, but we can look back at it if we need to. Okay, so what, what springs to mind just from those issues that I've raised? Well, well for me, um, 
the, the most I do for um <clears throat> for, for the environment, I think, is recycling. And also, I write, uh, my car is petrol driven, but um, it's it's very economical, and um, it's uh, you know, I always get the the best petrol I can. You know, uh, um, lead free. So there are different options for petrol. I don't know really anything about it, but well, there are well, more eco options, are there? As... Well, well, there's the um, there's um, the ordinary ordinary lead free, and then you got like the supreme lead free, which um, it's it helps the car run more efficiently, which is better for the environment, and it, it burns at a less um, costly rice as well. So I'll make sure I get the best petrol. Oh, maybe I should try that. I go for the cheaper option. How? Oh, well, well um, I've been I've been using the more expensive one for for a while now. But yeah. It doesn't work out that much for more expensive. No. Again, mm. I've it. got a very little car. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think Robin was going to say something. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just sticking with the petrol fund, I believe some of them do contain um, ethanol, which is a, a biofuel. Oh, um, OK. I, I think mm. I'm not sure about that. You'd have to check. But I believe that some of them do contain a, a percentage right. of. And electric of, it, cars might come in more later on, I mightn't think, they as well? I think they will, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, there's a man who lives near me and he's got a, he's got a hybrid Toyota. Mm. And that runs sort of half electric and half federal. Hmm. I think what's putting a lot of us off with electric at the minute is the initial the high start cost. Device. Yes. You know, when I was driving the Bazard on the back, in fact, because it was cheaper to run it, it might actually have been about break even over sort of five years or something. But now I'm not driving the Bazard on the back yeah. working from home, that then it would be a mm. it would just be an expense that you really yeah. you're very hard pressed to justify. Yeah. Um, coming back to food for a minute, there were some things there that I was, because as I as mentioned before, I grew up on a market garden, so oh, yes, yeah. I've actually gro grown quite a lot of food, food at various times. Um, the thing you write about, the there's a startup cost. If you go organic, you have to not use any insecticides or any chemicals, I think, for three years on your land. And during those three years, you can't claim you're organic. So you oh, have the additional mm. cost of being organic without being able to, re to recoup it. Mm. Um, the thing about, about eating meat, I mean, there's, I mean, my son's vegan, and and for him, it's it's an ethical thing that you know you just uh, shouldn't eat animals because it's not a nice thing to do to them. Um, if you were just looking at it purely on a on a what's the best use of the land, I think some animals work to your advantage because they can be used as a they can be used as part of a um, organic you know rotation and that sort of thing. Um, but also there are some land that you can't really use to grow anything else. So if you stick grass on it and then grow sheep mm. or there's bits of crops that are that are left over that you can't eat, that you can feed to animals and mm. they can eat. So there's a there's a there's a sweet spot where a small percentage of meat, probably a lot less than we currently eat, would would actually be beneficial. Um, and something that I come across many years ago. It's still, it's still around, but I've never heard it pushed. It's something, it's sometimes called the Fife diet. I believe it's got another name. But basically, the idea is you only eat food that's produced locally ish, you know, within, I think, 15 miles or something like that. Mm. Which means that A, there's very little carbon footprint moving it, and B, you pretty much do eat the seasonal foods because you just, <laughs> they're the yeah. only things you can get hold of. What's that called um, again, Robin? Sorry? Well, Fife diet. Uh, Oh, okay. It's sometimes okay. referred to as a five diet. It's worth it's worth it. I think if you Google five diet, you'll find it. Mm. I just I just did. Um, but this was done. It was called that years ago because they did it around five. That they they sort of mm. pioneered it. But I've never really heard it pushed or you know promoted. Mm. Perhaps one of the things is that a lot of the things you would have probably have a job to source them locally because you know things like carrots, for instance, produced by massive producers in the Fens or somewhere, and they supply the whole of England. So unless you happen to live in the Fens, near the Fens, then, you know, buying locally sourced carrots, although it's something you could grow here quite happily, yeah. 
um, is, is probably going to be difficult. Mm. Mm. I think we may start seeing more of a push towards buying locally and yeah. towards eating so. seasonably. <laughs> well, I think through Brexit, I think that's yeah. going to push it a lot faster than it would have ordinarily been pushed because people are finding it very difficult to, to import all the things that they did. I know I read one article that yeah. said that imports have dropped to 58% of their mm. normal level for this year since mm. Brexit. So the things that we would buy out of season from other countries mm. in, mm. you know, we get a lot of our strawberries and tomatoes and things from Spain. Those sorts of things aren't mm. going to be so accessible now. Mm. So we may find this drawback to eating seasonably mm. and therefore mm. more sustainably mm. just out of convenience more than mm. anything else. Oh, that's good. The, there's one or two big growers of tomatoes in the UK now. There's one down on the Isle of Thanet where they basically built a small power station. So they burn gas, which is the most, if you're going to burn a, a fossil fuel, they burn gas produce electricity and then use the heat and some of the carbon dioxide produced from burning the gas to heat the glass houses. Oh, that's which good. Which is a, a, neat, a neat solution. Mm. But, mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. Otherwise, if you, were, if you were growing tomatoes and you wanted them any time other than sort yeah. of the three or four months in the middle of the summer, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have them because you can't yeah. produce them in, a, in an unheated glass house. No. no. I, d I didn't know some of when I did some more research I didn't know some of the things about organic um, food I didn't know so much of some of the more negative sides of that until I researched it mm. and I didn't really know that much about um, eating seasonably obviously I knew that you you know we can import import lots of things but I hadn't really sort of thought about that so much um, so I suppose I mean it I suppose it's it's more of a worry as well if organic has become a to some degree a bit of a thing for wealthier people in the world mm. rather than the poorer people in the world that's a bit of a concern mm. but then it does it does do something to care for the land so i suppose like lots of things it's a bit of a mixture because mm. mm. only if it's only if it's soil association certified organic though because you can put mm. the word organic on anything <laughs> And there's no way of, there's no, you don't have to have proof. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have any sort of certification to put organic on something. Only if you're soil association certified, that's the only time you have to have mm -hmm. certification. Anything that's organic can be, even things that say they are organic, it can be, you know, 2%, 3%, 4%. Mm -hmm. There's ridiculously small limits to what it can be. Oh, I didn't know that. Organic. Mm. Mm. It, it's, it, it's what um, they call greenwashing. There's a lot of it around now where um, sustainability and climate change and organic things are becoming much, much more popular. It's very much in big businesses' interests yeah. to look like they're making this effort, to look like they're putting this money yes. into sustainable yes. causes. So therefore, there is a lot of greenwashing. So things that say they're made from natural products and things that say they come from a sustainable source and the plastic's made of 50% recycled plastic, but the other 50% still virgin plastic, which then, because it's mixed, can never be recycled again and things like that. Mm. And it's very, very lucrative for big business to do this. And it's very easy for it to pass through all sorts of trading standards and mm. not get caught and not even be questioned you'll always get people that try and make money out of anything though won't oh you? yes mm. i think gary was going to say something sorry gary no i was, I was agreeing with you natalie <laughs> mm. that's all i was doing are, are you organic then that do you, do you eat organic things all oh, right i'm vegan you're vegan i'm oh, vegan right. but well, i'm not not organic no so, no no yeah it, uh, they do, I mean, organic's much more to do with pesticides. Yeah. 
welfare than, yeah. than anything else. Mm. It is partially to do with the welfare of animals, but it's very much partially. And obviously, if the organic movement gets bigger and organic farming gets bigger, it's going to go the same way as factory farming, just because of cost. Yeah. It's just going to be that they don't use the pesticides and the antibiotics mm. that they use. They'll mm. find another way to do it. Yeah. So the animal welfare as a whole isn't going to massively improve by something being organic. It will just mean the pesticides and the, mm. the antibiotics won't be involved mm. as much. Yeah. I suppose it depends what your motivation is, whether you, what, mm. what you choose, what your motivation is. Mm. So if animal mm. welfare is your main motivation, then you'll perhaps make a different choice. Somebody who perhaps other environmental issues are your motivation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, once you get a sort of a certified standard or something, then the, 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 then the emphasis is trying to meet the standard rather than trying to meet whatever it was the standard was trying to yes. promote in the first place. Yes, you know, right. by, by whatever means you can get to. You know, you see it in yeah. education, the same thing. Yeah. So um, I, I buy yeah. organic milk for my children yeah, because I don't drink cow's milk, but I buy it as them. It's like I call it like a redeeming feature. Mm. That's something that might be slightly better. Mm. Um, but I was a bit concerned about the cost side of it. And there have been times when I haven't been able to buy organic milk fairly often actually just because it is so expensive mm. um so that is another issue isn't it that perhaps mm. perhaps particularly people in this part of the world and um you know we've got more of a luxury to choose and perhaps some others have mm. which is an issue mm. but the others that don't have that choice may well have a much more sustainable diet than we do yeah. and may well have much better preserved land and much better produced food because they mm. don't have the need to produce mass amounts and to produce it with all the pesticides and to introduce all the antibiotics into the food chain. They mm. may well have a much more sustainable and a much better diet. Mm. I mean, we need organic more because the pesticides and everything that we put into the food chain is such a huge amount that we have to do something better so what did you think about my idea of kind of looking for something that kind of has something mm. going for it do you think that was too negative way of looking at it or did or did that make sense to no. you no no that it was a, sense to me. a yeah. positive thing wasn't it really yeah mm. oh so positive yeah yeah i think so because it, because it's it's so difficult to do everything mm. green, isn't it? It's so difficult to do that, and but you know the lifestyles that we have, although the awareness of environmental issues definitely, you know, much more on people's radar now. There's been so many years, you know, thinking about when plastic started to be introduced. Um, you know, from then onwards, really, everything is set up in such a way that it is so difficult. Mm. Um, so I think if you can think, well, at least I'm doing this, this, and this, and mm. then start to make the move to do more and more of what you can do, um, that to me is a way of doing it. Because otherwise, you might go to one extreme, or you might sort of give up and think, well, yeah. this yeah. isn't, this is, mm. there's no point because I can't mm. do everything that I'd like to be able mm. to do. That was my. It's not about one person doing everything. It's about every person doing one thing. And if everyone just did one thing to change, mm. missed out one meat meal a week or, you know, decreased the amount of energy they're using, went for energy saving light bulbs or energy saving appliance instead of one that uses much more energy, go mm. for a, a cleaner way of, of cleaning, you know, go for something more natural or something that is more sustainably produced mm. or even just cut something out of your diet that's come from miles and miles and miles away. If everybody does one thing, that's what's really going to start mm. making a difference. Yes, yeah, some of the primary yeah. schools um, are doing, like some schools are doing like, um, or some people do like a, a meat-free day of the week, um, don't they? That then even if people ate meat, ate meat the rest of the week, then to have that one day would still make an impact. Another mm. thing that I forgot to mention actually in the kind of household section um, was you can you can now order washing nuts or a thing called a washing egg. 
Um, so washing nuts are actually, I mean, I don't know how they're imported. That's the other thing. And actually in the first lockdown, I couldn't get them anymore. So I moved over to the washing egg. But anyway, basically they're a nut that grows and you put them in a little material bag and they go in the washing machine and they, and they clean your clothes. My daughter and, had some. Say again, Liz? My daughter had some. Yes, yes. A year or so ago, yeah, she got hold of some for a friend, yeah. And the eco egg has got some sort of mineral balls that go in it. So it's like a little plastic egg with holes in. Um, and you put you order the little mineral refills. So you keep the plastic and just keep refilling it. And it does 70 washes before you have to take it out and refill it. And that one's more scented rather than nuts. Don't really smell of anything. But some mm. people add essential oils um, to make it sort of smell more i mean they're meant to be the the eco egg has definitely got more of that kind of laundry scent to it but that's mm. funny as well because i think we expect to smell that kind of laundry sort of smell <laughs> which is yeah. lovely and makes the whole room mm. smell nice mm. but actually it's probably it? really really not very good at all <laughs> and actually good. to smell of nothing in particular other than it's just yeah. clean there's nothing wrong with that but i suppose mm. we're so attuned to expecting that kind of laundry sort of smell aren't we mm. so <laughs> It's the same as we expect to eat tomatoes all year round. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it's just something that we we've grown to expect. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Anything. And I think yeah. I Brain. think I think, you know, um older generations to mine have said, you know, that meat used to be much more expensive and so mm. people would have it less just because it was mm. so pricey. Whereas yeah. now that the price that you can get such cheap mm. meat, people are having it more than they yeah. would have done in previous mm -hmm. generations. Yeah. My mum used to get a roast beef probably for Sunday and it used to do on a Monday. We had a big family. Mm. <laughs> used to <laughs> spread it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think food, in terms of percentage of income, food is much cheaper now than it used to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, definitely. Yeah. Oh, dear. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just coming back to your tomatoes, if you may, if I may indulge you for a few minutes. <laughs> um, it, up until about the mid seventies, I, I worked on a market garden, and we used to grow in the summer predominantly tomatoes, which were cold house, glass house tomatoes. So there was little energy input, but they were they were we supplied the local wholesaler, and they were supplied to loads of green grocers around South End, mm. restaurants, and that. And they, they were shipped, we shipped in wooden boxes. And when they delivered the tomatoes, they used to bring up, pick up the empty boxes and bring them back to us. We used to refill yeah. them. Yeah. Yep. And they were probably sold in paper bags. Yeah. So the carbon mm. footprint on that was, was, was nominal. You know, we used, mm. we used irrigated with pump water, with uh, pond water. So there was no sort of impact on the water supply. Yeah. Whereas mm. you say now, you know, if you buy tomatoes at this time of year, mm. good chance they've come from Spain. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, well, they would have come from Spain, actually, yeah. if they've not come from yeah. a, hot, a heated glass house in the UK, something oh. like that. Well, you can get yeah. refills for hand wash now, can't you? They haven't got the mm. um, um, the the pump, but then they've still got the plastic bottle, haven't they? The plastic container. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's a shame you can't sort of go somewhere and take your own thing and just sort of squirt it. Squirt I, saw it that, in. I saw that being done in early in the year. I had to go, I can't mm. remember why. It was one of the little supermarkets up like, around South Church somewhere, and they were doing that. They had a big oh, pack they? of stuff with a thing, and you put give it, gave it a yeah. squad, you know, they charged you 50p for the for mm. the contents. But There's a place a... in Lee, isn't there, where you can do refills? Yeah, I know. Um, Not nice. There used to be, I don't know if there still is, but the, the health food shop in Hockley used to do eco mm. refills. Mm. I don't know if it still does, but you took your old bottles in and then you got a discount. Yeah. Body Shop used to do refills. Oh, yeah. Many, many years. I mean, in, in the 1980s, Body Shop used to do refills. Mm. And oh, they also you... used to recycle all of their bottles. Yeah. yeah. Matt, you've got a lot of the shampoo bars and that kind of thing, haven't you? Which I haven't really got into as much, but they're, they're yeah. quite hard to, you know, we haven't even got anywhere that sells them locally anymore, have we? No, um, you've got some... Well, you can order online, perhaps? You can, yeah, that's that's how I do mine. But you can... Um, there are some places like Holland and Barrett have started doing a range called Ethique, but they're quite expensive. 
Who's that? So, um, and they had cleansing bars, shampoo bars, conditioner bars, <laughs> moisturising bars, all sorts of things. But they are quite expensive. But, um, yeah, hopefully there'll be more companies. There are a lot more companies online, but hopefully there'll be more companies that are more accessible to everybody that start that. And they're because, just in a paper bag. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they just, they just keep... I, mean, I I wash my hair every other day and I've had mine since probably about August last year mm. and I've still got some of it and it they really yeah they're, they're brilliant they really are I can't say anything wrong about shampoo bars they are <laughs> really good and especially if you've just got short hair which I have at the moment um yeah it's just so easy so easy but I do I don't have um, shower gel. I do use soap, which yeah. they come on leaps and bounds. They're not as horribly drying as they used to be, and they're definitely much better. But yeah, yeah, I think that's where I kind of that's where I do the the environmental and the obviously recycling and things like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff. Um, cleaning stuff and beauty stuff and things like that that's where I do a lot of my environmental and clothes as well most of my clothes probably about 90% of them come from eBay because when you start I know Michelle's got a lot of information from a website called Fashion Revolution and when you start looking at the amount of water and resources that goes into making something as simple as one t-shirt that you can get for one pound 50 from primark mm -hmm. you start realizing yeah this isn't good mm -hmm. we should definitely start looking at our clothes as more of a permanent fixture in our life rather than as a throwaway item i just get mine from my sisters or the charity <laughs> yeah I, i've always got mine from charity shops ebay's just a, an easy way of doing it and it's a bit hit and miss. I mean, you can't try things on, obviously, but yeah. But mm. yeah, I, I I've got loads of stuff on there, and I've bought stuff. My my children, um, they're not so keen on it now, but mm. you know they're in their twenties now, so they can go and buy whatever they yeah. want on their own. And and I flatly refuse to buy new stuff for them if they want anything, they have it secondhand. Yeah, yeah definitely. Make it yourself. <laughs> Oh, my nan always used to. Always new party dresses with the smocking. Always. Yeah. But, yeah, people don't do that anymore. Oh. Mm. So were there um, any other things on the um, PowerPoint that you maybe hadn't really thought about before or were are interested to kind of look into a bit more? Say, I found out new things just sort of preparing that I hadn't necessarily thought about before. Mm. New aspects. <clears throat> what about the um, sustainable kind of labels what do you think about those so you know so if if like um you know with the palm oil so so i love peanut butter for example and a lot of peanut butter have got palm oil in, but not all so no. so you can get some that has sustainable palm oil in but now i just get that doesn't have any palm oil in at all and because then I think well, it's just avoids that whole area and you, you just have to check the label to check, yeah. you know. Um, and yeah. I know, say with, with tuna, a lot, lot of tuna seems to have a label on it now. Um, I mean, not I don't eat tuna myself, but it seems to have a label. But is that something that, um, that you sort of know much about or have, have looked into at all? No, I didn't, because I eat quite a bit of tuna, I suppose. Well, you know, but I don't really, uh, yeah, I've not really seen, uh, I got to get it from Lidl, so probably their own stuff, what they sell. So I must have a look at you next time, what label they've got on it. It's also the dolphin friendly stuff. Yes, the what's, yeah. The dolphin friendly tuna, because if it's line caught rather than net caught. Oh, okay. Right. It doesn't catch the dolphins because the bycatch, when they catch the fish, yeah. They just throw away. Um, they don't even throw it back in. They just get rid of it. Yeah. So 
that's why um that's why a lot of the time tuna fishing is damaging to dolphins so line caught tuna is better than net caught tuna okay mm. oh, how, how do you tell it should say it on it Oh, right. A lot of them just say dolphin friendly now on the side of the tin. Oh, yes, yes. As well as having the sustainable kind of um, sort of mark as well. And mm. soya, soya is an interesting one um, yeah. because I used oh. to have an, you know, loads and loads of soy milk, you know, in my coffee, yeah. with my porridge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I, now I'm having less and having more oat milk and more almond milk. Um, because obviously there's been a problem with too much soy being produced and it having a bad effect on the rainforest. Although there's some argument about the, the soy that's produced to feed animals for me as being more of a problem, but I don't know too much about that. But then again, I just thought, I mean, actually my, my, um, um, so, um, yes, I'm, I mean, so, um, soy. Yeah, so, I'm just trying to have, yeah, so less of that and more oat and almond. I prefer soy to oat milk, especially in my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, I think oat milk in coffee is the best, personally. It really oat is. Milk. Uh, oat milk, let me see. Oh, yeah. Oat milk is very nice, I've found it. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I've tried it. Mm. Mm. It is what... It's classed as sustainable as well, though, isn't it? What well, oat milk? No, I mean, what do different companies class as sustainable? Oh, right, yeah. And the yeah. different, um, the different levels that that can be maintained at. Yeah. And whether it's a standard or whether it's just a, a buzzword. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's why I thought with. Um, with the palm, um, with the palm oil, um, you can get you can get organic, um, you know, peanut butter and sustainable palm oil in it. But I just thought mm. if I could avoid palm oil completely, that's better. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of yeah. the vegan, a lot of the vegan frozen meals have palm oil in as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I've stopped having some of those that do have palm oil now because mm. I just thought if I can avoid it, then I will. Um, so okay. yeah, it's, just, it's like just it is a real minefield because you're coming up against issues all the time. Um, you can only just sort of try and be mindful of it as much as possible, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, best thing is just eat your veg and just be basic, you know, no mm. ready meals and all that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> you know what's in it then, don't we? Mm. Oh, yeah. one, one thing we haven't got into is the whole fair trade thing, which isn't so much, yeah. well, isn't this is so much to do with the environment, but it's definitely to do with ethics. Um, you know, to, to be aware of, that's another thing to be aware of when I try and buy fair trade coffee. And um, mm. so, um, yeah, there's just so many things to be aware of. You know, you could just drive yourself crazy with it. And, and I think from looking at that from a theological point of view, that's because the world's not as it should be, is it? And, you know, humans have messed yes. it up. Um, mm. but, uh, but then we can still, you know, part of joining in with what God wants for the world I think is to is to do these things that mm. show some care and some consideration. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think maybe when I thought of the word redeeming feature, I wasn't necessarily at the time that I thought of it thinking of it in a theological sense. I think it might have even been before before I was a Christian or maybe the early days before that I thought of that. But then actually I think it works on both levels. It works on the level mm. of something that makes it less bad but it also works on the level of of actually bringing about something of god's healing for the world so i think the, yes. two, the two make sense yes yeah both work together don't they yes, yeah yeah and i think I, to me that's a really yeah a positive way of looking at it is that if we can do anything that brings that healing um you know that that is, that is something and to care for poorer people around the world as well as much as we can I think it goes back to right at the beginning when you read the bible passage that said about us being stewards of the earth mm. Mm. Yes. yeah are you vegan then because of what it's about you know because of you know what they yes. do with, yeah yeah I I've 
I was vegan when I was younger and then I went back to eating meat because I was told it was for medical reasons, um, which there's a great possibility was not true. Um, and then I went to being vegetarian for health reasons. And then I read about the dairy industry and I just thought, I want no part of that. Right. Mm. And that was, well, that was the moment I turned vegan. You could get milk. What's, you know, if you can get it from directly from a farm, what, you know, treat it, you know, do you think? Don't know. Possibly. I mean, when I was in Ireland, when I was younger, because that's where my dad's family was from, we went to a, you know, farmer just up the road. It wasn't really a very big farm. We had a cow and we were able to milk the cow, you know, and yeah. had the milk straight from like that. Yeah, see, that that's the thing yeah. with... With a lot of vegans, I don't think they'd argue that if something was able to be done without harming the creatures, yeah. then they would. Yeah. Honey is is one particular thing where people say, oh, but the bees don't, you know, they have to produce the honey, but yeah. it's the way that it's extracted from the hive mm. and the way that right. the, the honeycombs are stolen and things. And, and, and it's the animal welfare element of it. If that's taken out of it, and yeah, yeah you're milking your own cows and... Yeah. Yeah you know, having your chickens in your garden and things yeah. and them just laying eggs naturally rather than, yeah. you know, being put in tiny little pens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a completely different conversation. Yeah. Honey, oh. yeah, Come on, Liz. You could get honey naturally as well without having to, do you think, if you have your own bees? Yeah, yeah you can, but it's obviously much, much, much smaller oh, yeah. quantities yeah, than yeah, you yeah. would be able to get. Yeah. Mainstream. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I've always thought that I wouldn't necessarily, I probably wouldn't be a vegan if things were different. Um, mm. And if things were done on a much smaller scale, I think most people, it's a response to farming that's, you know, we call factory farming because of the way it's done that's, yeah. that puts that puts profit mm. as a priority rather than anything else. Um, and so that's the reason why. Mm. And so I, I was a vegan. Um, from about the same time that Nat and I met from sort of 16, 17. Um, then I sort of went back to being a vegetarian for a couple of years when I was about 30. And then, and then I went back to it sort of about 32, 33, I think it was roughly. Um, and, but now that I'm a Christian, I look at it, I think I mentioned this before, you know, I had that ethic anyway but it's given me even more of a reason to have it having a faith as well so that it okay. just adds more to it in that respect mm. yeah um but i think yeah i think it's to do with so i think some some vegetarians get very upset about animals being killed but mm. then again if that was done humanely although yeah. i wouldn't like to see it necessarily yeah. And um, if it was done humanely, that's not necessarily as bad as, as an animal being, be, being used for meal, but being treated appallingly. So it's not necessarily the, the, the death, it's, mm. it's the, the whole, the animal's whole life mm. and the way they've been treated, in, yes. in, in my view. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know a girl I work with, she was really, yeah, vegan. Oh God, in every single way. And I just spoke a little bit about God, but she, I don't want to know about him, but I had to listen to her about being a vegan, but she wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, obviously not everyone has that, but as I say, you yeah. know, you could, uh, for me, the two things just go hand in hand, yeah. but obviously, obviously not. I mean, most people yeah. that are vegans probably aren't Christian. Oh, yeah. No. And, and it, oh. which just goes with something that I've said before as well, that, that, that God works just as much outside the church as he does within yeah. it <laughs> yeah. and god is and to me god is out there yeah. giving that compassion to people even if they don't yeah think that yeah. he's god that yeah. is that is oh, there yeah, yeah. there's a lovely yes. girl but oh gosh she was hot on the vegan <laughs> some people are very militant now aren't they about it and that militant vegan yeah okay yeah. yeah you you do get that you do get that I more know. now you do. yeah, yeah. 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 Which, yeah, which, um, yeah. It puts people curious. off. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. It yeah. really puts people off. The girls in the office, they couldn't stand it. That's all you could hear, you know, about, uh, you know, 
vegan, what she, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because we think about, you know, as Christians sharing our faith, yeah. and that people that have these very strong sort of moral convictions can be like the most... Um, sort of the worst example of trying to kind of um, convert people to their way of thinking, can't they? Mm -hmm. So we think about, you know, the history of, of how Christians try to forcibly convert people, yeah. but yeah. some people with strong ethical views yeah. can be quite yeah, forceful yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. So, so has this made you think, you don't have to say, but um, has this made <laughs> think of anything else you might look into perhaps doing in the future or I'd definitely want to look into you know uh, maybe the um the green energy and the eating seasonally which is not something yeah. that I've looked at up to yeah. this point yeah seasonally yeah definitely mm. not. yeah grow your own and just eat when's in season really it's just when yeah. you got a well no my husband really um He'll probably, he likes raspberries and strawberries. <laughs> well, not strawberries, in the winter, you know. Mm. I just say, no, I can't get them. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. But, and get the it's, thing it's, is, it's that, it's that one thing again, isn't it? If you do one thing, if you change that yeah, yeah. part so that yeah. even 60% of the time you're eating seasonably. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Oh, you've, oh you've, she's <laughs> muted herself. <laughs> In this sentence. I got a phone call. It'll have to wait. Yeah, so, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's that one thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's, I've, I've absolutely loved doing these sessions. And, and if anyone would like to look at those videos or anything else I'd like to chat about, then do email me because, hmm. um, I mean, I, I'll be seeing you all in um you know in in other ways anyway i'm sure um yeah. but um yeah just if if i'd love to carry on this conversation and it's definitely something that that i would really like to be talked about more both you know inside and outside the church so i think mm. keep having those conversations with people in a gentle loving manner <laughs> 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 well, fingers crossed, as of the 12th of April, because there's less than six of us, we'll all be able to go outside and talk about it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Fingers exactly. crossed. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. So I'll just pray to finish then, and then I'll let you um, get on with your evenings. Um, and if anyone would like to pray after me, that's fine as well. So, um, dear Lord Jesus, um, thank you once again that we've been able to join together for this um, very interesting discussion and please inspire us um, to be stewards for your creation. Please show us the ways that you would have us care for it and um, show us how to um, care for each other um, to care for our neighbours around the world um, and how we can talk about these issues um, with others um, in a loving manner. And um, yes, please bless each of um, each of those who have come to have the discussion this evening. And please be with us in, in the rest of the week. And we pray all this in your almighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, uh, everybody. Yeah. And, and Michelle you. and everybody else. Yes. Yes. Been really people. good. And a yeah. good discussion, and I've yeah. appreciated yes. oh. everybody's thoughts and comments on that. Yeah. No, thank thank you all. Okay, yeah, take take right. care then. God bless. Yeah. See you soon. God bless you. Yeah. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Good week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.